Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to the Titanium Man Garage. And uh, if you've seen my previous video on Polaris Ranger 6x6, was this an easy fix? Well, stay tuned to find out, because uh, there'll be a couple lessons along the way, a uh, mistake I made, um, and uh, hopefully you guys will learn from it. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll answer any questions if I can. This thing is a tight fit in my little shop. Oh, but I got her in, so we're going to start ripping this thing apart and see what it takes. It's a disappointment to me the Bendix gear wasn't shot like I hoped, but the piston is fried, so I'll be uh, ripping that motor apart. And it looks like I'm going to have to take that top console off to uh, get to everything. I got the side panels, but I still got to take the carb off. So I'll be doing that next. Alright, so it looks like I got to take this panel off, so I took the four bolts off perimeter pull this out and then I'm gonna have to take that panel off to get to the carburetor and everything so the carb is all down here behind this panel and all goes down I think I'm gonna try to remove the panels just to get that out of the way uh, make things a lot easier and see what we got It'll be a lot easier to um, probably remove the motor too. It's the first for me, I'm just kind of diving into it and uh, see how it goes. All right, it is a cold November day, so I got my coat on right now. It looks like there's a main wiring harness, so I pull that off, it should just pull back. Here's the carb. It looks pretty grimy. So the backstory on this was uh, the diet on the person, and they couldn't afford to get it fixed, or couldn't get it fixed. I don't know why. And they let it sit for two years. The carb's probably all grimy. I'm curious what that air box looks like. Um, it's kind of interesting how they have the uh, the snorkel for the the clutch up here. And uh, I'm not sure what this is yet, I'll have to find out, but yeah, I'm going to take that carb off, see what that looks like. Man, I tell you, this is a lot easier to work on than a, a sportsman, everything's all open. I'm liking it. Take them screws off, and remove the carb, and then I'll probably pull the motor because it's locked up.
All right, so you can tell a lot about what's going on by what the spark plug looks like. I'm gonna pull spark plug, see what that's doing. Spark plug's a little on the black side, but not too terrible. I'm kind of contemplating, do I pull the motor or do I just pull the jug off right here? All right, I want to see what the rockers look like. I'm really liking how easy this is to take apart. So the interesting part is the motor turns backwards, but it won't go forward. It's got compression, that's weird. Okay, for some reason, when I turn the, the motor clockwise, it won't turn all the way over. It'll stop. I can spin it counterclockwise and it spins. It's telling me there's either the bent valve or there's something stuck in the piston that's not allowing the valves to open. So I'm gonna try taking the rockers off and then spinning it over, see what happens. All right, so I got half the engine ripped apart in probably a matter of 20 minutes. And this is really bizarre to me, I've never seen this. Uh, piston looks good, the cylinder walls look good. Nothing's moving. Um, but yet, when I, turn the, when I turn the flywheel, it stops halfway. It stops right there, so. It's got to be something broken in the engine somewhere down at the bottom of the case. So it looks like I'm tearing this thing out. All right, guys, I'm going to be really disappointed if I pull a clutch cover off and I found a mouse nest that's blocking the engine from turning because I already took the head off. I'm seeing pieces of belt right here, and when I pulled the snorkel off, a uh, big rat's nest or mouse nest popped out. So we're gonna take a look at this clutch. We can get the light right spot here. So far everything's been easy to take off of this thing except for this cover. Okay guys, so far this has been pretty easy to disassemble. Got the top off, got the uh, breather or the snorkel off. Um, I was easily able to access everything from the top here. Took the side panels off. Um, you're not going to believe what I found. So, this was the belt or what's left of it. A uh, mouse or some kind of animal got into the clutch cover, chewed up the belt, and when the owner went to start it, it got tangled in the clutch and the motor wouldn't turn, which is a real bummer for me because look how far I got with this engine. And uh, now I can turn it over, it turns over freely, but uh, I gotta pull the motor out anyway and put a better motor mount in. 
so I'd have to remove the motor anyway and this will just make it easier I could put a fresh head gasket on it but uh, yeah wow uh, <laughs> kind of a little bit of waste of time for me but you know sometimes that happens sometimes you think it's one thing it's something completely different I got the motor back together after uh, I figured out uh, the belt was wrapped around the clutch. Yeah, big oops on me. It was acting like the piston skirt was fried and fell into the crank and the crank was locking up. Yep, even the best mechanics uh, screw up once in a while. It was a minor oversight or major oversight on my part. I wasted two hours uh, pulling the head off, but the good part is after I pulled the, the head off, I cleaned the valves and the top of the piston because there was a bunch of carbon on there. And I still have to fix this motor mount because this thing still moves. So yeah, one thing to keep an eye on, which like I said, I overlooked, check your clutches. If you think your engine's locked up, might be the belt. Check that out. Squirrel or mouse or chipmunk, who knows what got in there, but chewed up the belt and when the owner went to start it it just wrapped around the clutch and acted like the engine locked up so I'm still gonna have to move that engine forward and uh, replace the motor mount and clean that carb the carb actually doesn't look in bad shape I think I can get away with just cleaning the bowl and the jet because it was sitting for two years Let's see what this does now. Let's see if I can't pull it over. She's got compression. I do have the spark plug in. Yeah, she pulls pretty tight. I got some good compression. The cylinder walls looked excellent. They looked almost brand new. You can still see the cross uh, scratching in the cylinder walls. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this bad boy back together, fire it up, and show you guys how it runs. Alright guys, so I got her back together. Like I said I uh, pulled the head off, I put a new gasket on, I cleaned the, um, the carbon off the uh, valves and the piston right away. And I cleaned up the carb, got her back together, just put one bolt in, I'm actually draining the gas, there's old gas in the gas tanks. So I got my trusty reserve fuel tank up here. It's just going straight into the carb. And uh, you know, this thing's been sitting for two years, so let me show you how this bad boy fires up. That's pretty good. So the guy, the chipmunk chewed up the belt, wrapped her on the clutch, it wasn't allowing the engine to spin. Now I just gotta buy a new belt. Bolt this thing back together, put my air box on. Tweak the carb. And she's running out of gas. <laughs> so yeah, one more easy fix. Just tweak the carb, get a new belt, and this bad boy will be ready to go. Like I said, even the best mechanics make mistakes. You know, I overlooked the belt, I started taking it apart. I had an engine once that the piston skirt fried off, landed down into the case and the crank hit it. So that's what it was acting like. So that's what I thought it was. I guess I should have checked the belt first. 
Yep, check your belts, check the flywheel, check your Bendix gear first, carb. Yeah, this thing should pretty be pretty nice once I get it going. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't. And like always, till next time.